Good morning. Welcome back to Friday Kitchen Science with Balch Nature School staff, Libra, Miss Libra and Miss Carolyn. This welcome good morning. to this. Good morning. And this morning we're going to do part two of over and under and how do plants grow. We're going to look back at some of the things that we did last week and move forward with some new planting ideas. We want to thank everyone at the Fairbanks Museum for letting us do our Friday morning science videos. Part two, we're going to start by going backwards. Last week we talked about seeds and planting tubers and we looked at what bulbs and rhizomes were. We're going to go back and look at those briefly and then we're going to plant and work with bulbs and rhizomes today. We started with some seeds last week and of course seeds grow with lots of different plants and here is the seed head of a cone flower and that prickly cone flower has lots of little seeds in it that we can save and plant or birds like to eat these as well and, and other wild critters. So we, and we planted some seeds. I planted some lettuce seeds in a covered container and they started to sprout a little bit. But we're gonna keep those growing and see if we can have some microgreens with those. The second thing that we looked at were tubers. We took some potatoes that were sprouting sprouts those little things that will start growing out of your potato are called sprouts. The little brown spots and nodules on a potato are called eyes. And if you cut those apart, you can start a new plant with them. Miss Libra has some examples of some sprouting that she did of some tubers as well. And she's going to share that this morning. So Ms. Carolyn put her potato in soil. My potato has been in water on a tray for the week. And you can see it's come quite far. I have, get a good example here, sprouts oh. on the top and roots. So I've, that's one, two, the three eyes, all three. And they're using the potato for food to grow. They're using the starches and sugars in this potato. Thank you for showing us that. Now, I did put one potato in soil. And I'm going to take it out of the soil so we can look at the roots. Now, the potato that I put into the soil has started roots growing down. You can see all the soil clinging to the roots and new sprouts have grown. So when I'll put that back in that moist soil and as sprouts grow up and stems and leaves start to form, I'm going to add more soil in around it and keep building it up in this tall box so that it can still continue to grow taller and produce more tubers or potatoes from it. Miss Lieber, did you try another tuber, a sweet potato? This is a sweet potato that I chose to grow with the same system that Miss Carolyn did her avocado pit, using three sticks, skewers, and a cup of water. And unlike the red potato, there's not a lot of growth happening, but I did notice along the edge, these small white protrusions. This is an old root and new ones are going to start. I've also noticed it's hard to tell, but the surface where I cut has developed some kind of lumps and I'm curious if anything's going to start to come out of those or if that's just the cells absorbing water. I'm curious to see what's going to happen there. That sounds really curious. I can't wait to see how that changes. I read the sweet potatoes take longer to root and produce a, a, a vine, and they produce a vine instead of 
the same structure as the white and red potatoes do. So that will be a real right. good one to check back on next week. The other thing that we did last week is we took some scraps of food. Like I had a beet top that I cut the top off and I put it in water. And look what is coming from the top of that mm. plant. So I won't grow another beet, but I will grow beet leaves. I had some carrots, which haven't produced as many leaves as the beets. Mm. Something I did notice again, though, it's not just growth on top. When I flip my carrot over, see if you can see, you can see the color differentiation. There's the center heart of the root. It's actually going to produce, I think you can see this white line here and a one on the bottom. It's going to produce roots from there. There's a tiny one starting right here on the edge. So not only do we have growth from the top, but it's finding another way to drink out the sides. And sometimes if you pick a carrot in the fall or the summer, you might notice that they have very small white roots coming off them underground. That's true. So that's the carrot. That's great. She did, we did carrots, we did beets, and did we do celery as well? Did we do a start of celery? We Has that changed? Do celery. It has changed a little, not tremendously. So there's my celery. Again, I cut it off and saved the root end. I cleaned it off with a little slice and then put it in water. And I think for this one, I'm going to, I'm going to fill this up with soil and see the difference in growth between last week in water and one week in soil. And we'll see if it takes a little better or if anything, anything happens around the base once soil is added. Okay, well the next thing that we were going to move on to was bulbs. Bulbs are sort of round. This labor has some examples of different bulbs. We'll be going back and find I, I have one that I planted in soil. She's got some examples of different kinds of bulbs and I have a few different kinds of bulbs as well. So let's check out bulbs. Mm -hmm. All right. So here's a bulb. This is a flower that has gone by. So this is the spent flower and leaves. The flower comes up on a stalk. And then if we follow that stalk all the way back underground, this would be ground level. We have a daffodil bulb. And you can notice it has produced another bulb there. So mother bulb and her baby. So bulbs grow new bulb babies. Yeah. If I were to pull this baby off, he has his own little set of roots and I could replant that separately and have two plants. A bulb that we eat is an onion. I just pulled this from the soil this morning, and this is a type of onion I have in my garden called an Egyptian walking onion. It may have other names, but that's one of its common names. And how this grows, the cleaner example, these two will grow under the soil. The greens will come up, and they'll shoot this center stalk which is similar to garlic or chives or scallions. It smells like an onion. So the bulb is edible. The greens that come up are edible, just like you can use them like scallions. But what's really fascinating is to spread more bulbs. Not only does the bulb reproduce, but it shoots up this long, hollow stalk kind of dry now and on the top of the stalk will grow more tiny onions and when the stalk is overloaded in the fall it dries and falls over into the soil the tiny onions then lay on the soil 
and that's where they'll start growing. And you can see they have their little roots. So every one of these that falls down will then get bigger, send up that shoot, fall into the soil, and produce more onions. Wow, that's pretty neat. Look at how that grows. I picked up some chives out of my garden this morning, and they have a very small bulb at the bottom with the roots coming off, and they take away last year's dried part. You can see that, scat, that chive bulb, and we usually eat stock mostly, but it does grow from a bulb. Another plant that grows, grows from a bulb, or some of our wildflowers and plants grow from bulbs as well. Bulbs um, carry all of the food they need, and they actually have the leaf inside, so that when it, if you've ever opened an onion and it's got a little bit of green in the middle, it's starting to get ready to grow. As an example of that, one that I also picked up out of my woods last, at my woods last night was Dutchman's Bridges. Dutchman's mm -hmm. Bridges is a very early spring flower. It has a little bulb, and you can see there's tiny little bulbs growing off from it, and it grows a real sweet little flower, a white flower that has these little mm -hmm. pantaloons hanging off from the stalks. It takes a few years for a Dutchman's Bridges plant to grow mature enough to produce the flowers. But that's another bulb Beautiful. plant. And did we have any more bulbs? Or is that? I don't think we have any, but I'd be curious if our followers could think of another kind of bulb that we eat. Oh, yes. We'll have to, Maybe have to one we haven't shown yet. Mm -hmm. well, we'll have to check that out and see if they can find any more. So those are, it's a little bit about bulbs. Now I did take one of those onions that was grow, sprouting in my refrigerator and I planted it in soil last week. And this is what it looks like this week. It has grown more of the top part of the plant. It hasn't rooted yet but I bet it's gonna grow a nice, strong root system. I'll plant that right back in here, get the soil in around it, and keep it moist and in my windowsill, and hopefully I'll be having a plant that I can transplant into my garden. So those are bulbs. Now another root structure is called a rhizome. A rhizome is really a stem that grows roots and a leaf structure. And a really easy example of seeing that is with an iris plant. And here is an iris rhizome. Here's the leaf that's part of it. Here's roots that have grown. But there are lots of different plants mm. that grow from rhizomes. And we've got some great examples of those. Okay. You've got one that we've confirmed is a rhizome. We have. I have. So this morning, we, I think last week, we talked a little bit about violets and our curiosity on how those grew. Well, I went out and I dug some violets. And when I dug them up, I kind of got just this big pile of mess is what it looked like. But then I started rinsing it off and I realized that they're all separate pieces. And the roots are tangled? They're all tangled up. So I washed a couple off so we could get a little better example. So here's one, which has just a little bit of leaf growth coming on the top. So as you said, the rhizome is a subterranean stem, which means it grows under the soil. It grows roots down the bottom that are actually called adventitious roots, and then upward growth from the top. So where there are small 
bulges like this. You'll have your leaves and your roots from the bottom. And when they're fully leaved out, it's a little difficult to tell. You can't really see that rhizome in there as well. But as Ms. Carolyn was saying, I could take these all separately. That's a little violet plant. One. Yeah, that would be another. We don't have much roots, but he's gonna grow because I can see the nodes or almost the overlap connections where these grow. Here's another one coming from the bottom. And these have beautiful roots from the bottom. And remember again, this would be below soil and the leaves would be above the soil. Not a rhizome we eat still though. So we need to find some rhizomes we can eat. Well, even if, let's go back to the violets a minute. I was reading more about those because I have been watching the seed pods explode from our violets at our Balch Nature School garden. Mm -hmm. and what I found is that they reproduce with the rhizomes and by seed. The seeds are mm -hmm. grown on, you know, they, they're at sort of the bottom of the flowering part and they just sort of throw themselves mm -hmm. out. They're little tiny black round seeds. Ants like to eat them because they're coated with this fatty material. They do. So ants carry them away, eat the coating and leave the seed. And then once that outside coating is gone, the seed can grow. So with the ants help, they spread everywhere. So it's a some they, they do, and they grow in poor soil and good soil, so you can really do some nice ground cover with them. Another favorite flower do. rhizome that we have before we go to the food ones is a wild plant called bloodroot. Bloodroot has a nice white flower and a big curly leaf. It it's looking a lot like mm -hmm. this one is starting to get a bud on it. That little white part oh, yeah. will open up. This will unfurl, and when the, the flower, which sort of looks like a daisy, is open, the leaves are quite small. But right after the, leaf, the flower goes by, those leaves get about the size of my hand. But there's mm. the rhizome. Now, the other fun thing about blood root here, remember we said with the rhizome that it grows those lovely root hairs. But the reason they call this blood root is when you break it open, can you see the color in there? I'm gonna give it a little squeeze. It almost drips out a little bit of liquid that looks like blood. And that red is used in dyes, it's used in making iodine, it's used in a lot of different things. But that's the blood root. But it has it lo loves a wet area. It spreads. Like Miss Neighbor was saying about the bulbs, a lot of the rhizomes like a shady wet area as well. And do. and did you notice that a lot of the earliest spring plants in our gardens and in our forests are rhizomes and bulbs? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We were talking about our rhizomes also being food. And Miss Lieber, you have an example of one. I do. And this, a lot of people may not be familiar with. This one's pretty dry. And I just found this one at my grocery store. This is called turmeric. So even without it growing, you can see, you can see the lines. These are the nodes where the growth would happen. And then you can see where new sprouts, these would be the upward shoots would come from here. A couple have been broken off. And then this bottom would be your root growth. Super. And another favorite rhizome that we like to eat is ginger. Ginger, again, has all these finger rhizomes and can be broken off. And you can see, I have a section of it, the little knobs, like Ms. Lieber said, will 
shoot up and then where the, the roots will come down and the smell is wonderful mm -hmm. if you like ginger mm -hmm. tea or ginger ale it's that same smell there's another plant that grows wild it's called wild ginger that grows in our area and it again it likes that wet area it's not as strong and pungent as the ginger that we get in the grocery store but it's still one that grows wild and it and it's again one of our early blooming flowers i found the jack in the pulpit that was starting to open so i took pictures of it when i got home i discovered underneath the pictures was wild ginger you see that little maroon flower at the very base of the leaves mm -hmm. that whole plant is not as high as four fingers that little flower is at the very bottom and the leaves are covering are just sitting on top of the old leaves that have fallen from last fall so you don't really unless you find the leaves and look it's hard to find it but this is blossoming probably within the next week. And you look for that little, those two little light color eyes looking up at you, <laughs> that maroony um, flower. But that's another example. And here's a, a better picture of the blossom and what the root structure mm -hmm. looks like on wild ginger. Around you. Beautiful. Yeah. There's one more edible rhizome that wasn't ready for harvest. So that's a question I'll leave for next week for our viewers if they can think. And see, I'll give you a clue. When it comes out of the ground, the spikes are green. We can eat it raw, but people usually steam it. And there's a substance inside called asparic acid that does something about I'll leave it at that we'll see if people can figure that out so a rhizome with green shoots we eat it usually steamed and the substance inside called asparic acid see what we can come up with okay and I hope to be seeing some of that soon in the gardens Me too. well thank you very much for coming today and helping us to study more and learn more about bulbs mm -hmm and rhizomes, both edible and wild, both for flowers and for food. And we wanna, again, thank Fairbanks Museum and Planetarium for our virtual learning shows. Those are all up on our website and past shows are available there, handouts or information relating to each show. For this uh, video, I'm going to be posting uh, some rhymes about growing seeds and plants. So thank you very much, and shall we see you next week? Bye. Bye-bye. Mm. Happy eating.